Yeah, this is really fascinating. It's the most comprehensive study to date. The NWEA, a national nonprofit organization, compared pre-COVID test scores with recent assessments during the pandemic. The tests are similar to the standardized tests students take every year that measure student performance. While there is some good news, there's also some concern students are slipping. Third grader Lolly Gonzalez is taking her classes from home in Seattle, Washington. Lolly loves gymnastics, and her mom, Angelica, says she's a social butterfly, so Lolly misses real school, especially her classmates. I miss kind of hugging my friends and giving them fist bumps and giving them high fives. Angelica says Lolly struggles with school because of ADHD, add in the pandemic and remote learning, and things are even more challenging. Are you concerned about her learning progress? Do you worry she may have fallen behind in reading or math? Absolutely. Uh, like a lot of parents around the U.S., I've heard parents saying they're calling this year a wash. So that's incredibly sad. There's a lot of children that are not online. They're not engaged in Zoom. New data out today from NWEA found student scores in third to eighth grade have slipped when it comes to math, down five to ten points compared to this time last year. We're definitely seeing some evidence that students have learned less since March than students would normally learn in a normal school year. Megan Kufeld is the senior research scientist at NWEA. What do we do with these results? We know math is very sequential and builds a lot on what kids have learned. And so really making sure that for the students who have fallen behind, we identify those skills and give students the support they need is really important. Angelica says Lolly is one of those students and needs to be in the classroom. From the beginning of last year when the schools closed, I mean, she just really wasn't able to do it. And she tried as hard as she could, but it was incredibly frustrating for her. Compared to 2019, the most affected in 2020, elementary grades, particularly students transitioning from fifth to sixth grade. Least affected, middle school students in seventh and eighth grades. But on the bright side, students seem to be doing well in reading some even showing gains in their ability. Reading seems very promising, very on par with the normal school year. We talked to fourth graders in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, who say they also miss being in class full time. Why do you think it's easier to learn when you're in school versus at home? Because when you're in school, you like, the teacher can help you easier because if you're at home, they can't see what you're doing if you're doing it wrong. It's easier in the classroom because like you don't get distracted. What are your worries as a parent? I guess academically worried that, you know, what are they missing? Because they're so much more independent. Is the quality of the learning the same? While the study looked at test scores for more than 4 million students, researchers say data is missing from schools that weren't able to test students because of COVID-19. Students who don't have Wi-Fi and were unable to test remotely and vulnerable kids who aren't attending school at all it may be painting a rosier picture than what's really happening for the students in that bottom half financially. The missing data can mean that we are underestimating the impacts. For now, remote learning is a quick fix for Lolly and millions of students like her across the country. But Angelica says that may come with long-term effects, learning loss for students who aren't thriving outside the classroom. We need to get creative with solutions. There has to be an answer because just calling it a wash for a whole year of learning for those children is just completely not acceptable. Great. And she is right. While this study focused on academics, experts say it's really important for parents to also pay attention to student mental health and emotional learning as well. Yeah, I mean, so many parents are going to connect with this. They have these worries. If your child is falling behind, you feel like they're falling behind. I mean, if you can afford a tutor, is that a good option? It's definitely a good idea. But before you think about hiring a tutor, ask your teacher first if they're willing to provide some extra one-on-one -on -one time or even give some extra assignments. If that is not an option, then use your social network to find a tutor or a teacher in your area. You want to make sure that you check their credentials and ask for proof of their certifications. And, of course, make sure you call their references. Yeah, Savannah pointed out tutors can be pricey. If you don't have the cash for a tutor and a lot of people are cash-strapped right now, what can you do? Don't forget. 
forget your local public libraries. A lot of them offered online tutoring even before the pandemic. Also look into nonprofits like the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Clubs and online nonprofits like the Khan Academy. They offer free lessons and videos on a variety of different mm -hmm. subjects for all grade levels. Another thing to do is pool resources with neighbors or other families at the school for teletutoring. And you can also try a teacher in training. Let's say you live in a college yeah. or a university town. Contact the school's College of Education. See if they can get paired up with a student teacher for your student. It's not going to solve the problem of in-person connections, right. but one-on-one -on -one time is really important, yes. too. Yeah. Sometimes even a high schooler might know yeah. that. They remember it more than any of us <laughs> exactly. do. For sure. Vicki, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Vicki.